Shalom Israel and welcome to Yasharala's 20 minute breakdown and before we get started I want to give all praises to the elders and the Akiyams in the highways and the byways pushing this word Kum Yasharala keep strong keep going and then let's just give all praises to Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai Bahashim Raka Kadash now um as I said before, welcome to Yasharala's 20 minute breakdown where I will attempt to um, break down the scriptures within 20 minutes, not a second over, but under is acceptable, but not a second over. Uh, right, today's lesson, um, I will be talking about, I will be trying, or should I say, so lucky, I will attempt to break down Isaiah, the 28th chapter, verse 9 and 10 which Isaiah in his book tells you how to read the Bible. He gives you the understanding on how to read the Bible and how to get the understanding. Uh, there's a certain way you must read the Bible. You cannot read the Bible front to back, according to Isaiah, to get the understanding. You cannot read it from Genesis to Revelations to get the full understanding. If you read it like a novel, what you will get is chronological order but to get the full understanding of what scriptures are saying you must read it the way how Isaiah um, you know advised us how to read the Bible now the Bible itself let, let, let's even just look at the Bible itself the word Bible now when people say Bible people come up with fancy names I've heard people say all oh, basic instructions before leaving earth given the Bible an, 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 an allogram. Now, that's not the case. The word Bible actually comes from the word Biblio, which is Greek. It comes from the Greek Biblio, which means collection of records. Now, you may ask yourself, whose records are they a collection of? Now, that's another lesson, which we will get into further down. But today, I'm attempting to break down Isaiah, the 28th chapter. Now, when you look at the Bible and when you read the Bible, you cannot read the Bible to get the understanding according to Isaiah. You cannot read the Bible like a novel. It's not a Mills and Booms book because everything you hear, oh, God is love and love here, love there. You've, you've got to read it as Isaiah tells you how to read it. Now, the Bible is like a jigsaw puzzle. You have to put the pieces together. Now, the pieces are not next to each other. As you turn one page, that verse is explained in that verse. It doesn't work like that. The Bible is put together to make you work, to make you study, to make you work, to get the understanding, which, we, which I will show you as we dissect Isaiah 28th chapter. Now, let's get into it. Now, um, straight away, we're going to read Isaiah, the 28th chapter. But first and foremost, as I said before, this is Yasharela's 20-minute breakdown, which I'll attempt to break down Isaiah 28, verse 9 and 10, within 20 minutes. So I have my timer. I'm going to start my timer in 3, 2, 1. There we go. We are on. Now, let's go straight into it. The book of Isaiah, chapter 28, Verse 9 and 10. I'll read them straight through first and then we'll take it piece by piece and break it down. Verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. Now, that's the full verse read out, verses 9 and 10. So now we're going to attempt to break it down. Let's start again at Isaiah 28, verse 9. Whom shall he, whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Stop there first and foremost. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Whom's the he, the most high? And what knowledge is he wanting to teach you? The knowledge of this Bible. Yeah? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? And also to understand the doctrine of this Bible, what is in this Bible, to understand. First and foremost, I'll just say to all those viewers, I use the King James 1611 version because I find this version, it's the old English version, 
it's complete and it has the apocrypha in it where it was originally before the protestants remove the 14 books out of the king james version in the 18th century so where regular bibles that you see in the churches today have 66 books um, the King James, the original King James, has the full 80 books, but we will go into that in another lesson. Right, right now we are breaking down Isaiah, the 28th chapter, verse 9 and 10. So, let's read on. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. So that's the full verse of nine it says whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast now let's stop there and break that down now he's telling you in isaiah that wh who's going to learn the understanding of the doctrine and get knowledge you must be able to be weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast now what does that mean what is the milk and what is what does it mean to be weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Now, let's give you an idea of what it's saying and then we'll go into the scripture. Now, the milk, the milk, if you think about milk and it talks about weaned from the milk, you, you know it's talking about a baby being weaned from the milk. Now, a newborn babe, you, he has milk. You never give a newborn babe meat. Right now, let's now from that saying, first and foremost, let's go into the scripture and then we'll dissect that furthermore. Now, we'll go to the book of First Peter, chapter two and two. And it reads as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Now, there it is. Now, you see, it shows you the milk is the beginning the meat the, the beginning the nourishing the, the beginning of the word where would you find the beginning the, the things that would nourish you to help you to grow now you'll find that in the first five books of Moses from Genesis to Deuteronomy those first five books because in there you'll find the milk of the word meaning the basics like it will explain the high holy days about keeping the Sabbath about the new moons, about um, the dietary law we are supposed to keep, and all other things. Those are the basics, the law, statute, commandments of the Most High God, which he gave to us in order to get closer to him, to know him. Now, that's the milk of the word. And let's further prove that. We will go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2. Now let's go to First Corinthians. It's lucky Israel. Mm -hmm. Let's go First Corinthians, chapter three, verse two. And this is what this is what um, Paul said to the Corinthians when he went to the church at Corinth. This is what he said. He said in First Corinthians, chapter three, verse two, "I have fed you with milk and not with meat." For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. So you see, Paul is even showing you that he fed them with milk. He gave them the, 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 the laws, the statute commandments, the, the basics, the basics. He gave them the basics. And like, as I said before, you'll find the basics in the first five books of Moses. Now, we can even go further into that again to get another precept, which is, we'll go to, let's go to Hebrews 5 and 12. Let's just further go there, Hebrews 5 and verse 12. And it, read, and it reads, for when, for when, so lucky, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. See, there again. So, you know, you need to be taught again. I had to be taught again. I mean, when I came into this truth, I had to be taught again. And I needed now to go back to milk, the sincere word, milk and study and understand the scriptures. 
So that's what it's saying. So, you know, the milk of the word is what we need to help us to grow. Grow in truth and in sincerity. Now, let's go on to verse 10 of the same Isaiah. Back to Isaiah 28, verse 10. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. Now, it said at the beginning of verse 10, precept for precept must it didn't say oh maybe or if you like it said for precept must be upon precept now what is a precept a precept is a command when like let's say when like your parents your mum or dad give you a command tell you to do something you have to do it that's a command when you're driving and a police officer tells you to pull over that's a command it's not up for discussion or negotiation it's a command you must comply that's what a precept is is a command now let's let's get a precept to show you where it's a command the precept now listen to this for i'll go to um psalms 119 verses i'll start with verse I will start with verse 104. So let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 104. And it reads, Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. So it's showing you through precepts, by precept in the Bible, you'll get the understanding. So you won't be any under false doctrine or going off on your own ideas. And even if you jump, we will jump about four verses up to verse 100 of the same Psalms 119. And it reads, I understand more than the ancients before, because, so lucky I'll start again. It says, I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. So it's even showing you, King David is saying he understands more than those that were before him because he do something by keeping the precepts and that's why he has the understanding by keeping the precepts you will get the understanding and uh, next thing then it says in verse we jump back to Isaiah 28 verse 10 then it says line upon line line upon line what is line upon line line upon line is keeping it in the context so you read it as it is written and you deliver it the same way. That's simple as that. There's no two ways about that. Line upon line, just keeping it in the context as it is written in. And you deliver it just as it is written is how you deliver it and how you read it. Simple as that. Back to Isaiah 28 verse 10. Then it says, here a little and there a little. Now, here a little and there a little. What does that mean? Now, let's let's precept it because it did say precept upon precept. So this is what I'm doing. As If you notice, while I'm breaking down Isaiah, the 28th chapter, I've been going precept upon precept. I've been going to First Peter, to Hebrews. I've, I've jumped about to Psalms. So see, I'm precepting upon precept. That is precept upon precept, going from here and there. And then, then it's going to show you this part, it's going to make it quite clear. And it says, here a little and there a little. So if you notice, while I was doing it, I've been reading you a little of this verse and a little of that verse. Now, I'm going to prove that even further. I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 13, verse 52. And it reads, it reads, Then said he unto them, Therefore, every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man is like unto a man that is an householder which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. So you see, this is the here a little, there a little. You can take a little from the New Testament and a little from the Old Testament, a little from here, a little from there. So you, you see, when some people just uh, Old Testament or New Testament, you have to eat the whole roll. It's one book. It is not, oh, that's new or that's old. Or we don't deal with the Old Testament anymore because that's old. We're in the New Testament. No, it's one whole book. 
Messiah said, lo, I come in the volume of the book. He didn't say, lo, I come in only the New Testament or I, uh, the, written, the Old Testament only written about me. He said, lo, I come in the volume of the book. He says it in the New Testament and the Old, showing you it's the whole book. Is The whole book is one. You cannot part it. The whole book is one. Now, this is the thing with this Bible. See, with this Bible, how you get the understanding? You must study. You won't just be able to pick it up and know. You must study. Now, let me show you that point. I'm going to turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. And it reads, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth. Now there again, I'm going to show you about the same, like is in Isaiah 28, verse 9 and 10. Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Now notice how, the, how in 2 Timothy 2.15, it just said, study to show thyself approved. So we must study this Bible to show ourselves approved to who? Unto God. A workman needeth not be ashamed. And it says rightfully dividing the word of truth. So we must rightfully divide the word of truth. Now, what is the word of truth? Now, this is how you precept upon precept again. You go to Isaiah, you go to Psalms, Salakia. Psalms chapter 119. And it's going to make it quite clear. Verse 142. And it reads... Now listen to this. This is going to make it very clear. It says, Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Now you see, the law is the truth. Now remember I just read to you in 2 Timothy 2.15, where it said, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. And then it said, rightfully dividing the word of truth. So you've got rightfully divide the word of truth. What is the word of truth? The law. As it just shows you in Psalms 119, verse 142, where it reads, right, thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Do you see? You've got to rightfully divide the truth, which is the laws. Rightfully divide them, which is what I just did in Isaiah 28, showing you how to read the Bible and how to get the understanding of the scriptures. Because people will say, oh, that's your interpretation. Oh, that's your interpretation. But we can precept that further because in the book of Second Peter 2, Second Peter Sulaki, in the book of Second Peter chapter 1, verse 20, it reads this knowing this first that no prophecy of the scriptures is of any private interpretation. So it's showing you. There is no private interpretation. So the only way you'll get the true and full understanding of these scriptures is by reading the Bible the way Isaiah said. You must do precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. A little from this verse, a little from that verse, a little from here, a little from there. But you must, first and foremost, be weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. So you learn the basics. You do not try to go into Revelations or Book of Daniel. No, you stay in the first five books of Moses and you learn there. Learn all the laws, the statutes, the commandments. Learn everything, everything that you need, all the milk that you desire to make you grow in faith and grow in the word are in the first five books of Moses. So with that... Um, I have managed to keep it under 20 minutes, just as promised. So with that, this is Yasharala signing out. Kom Yasharala, keep the faith and be strong, Israel. Until my next lesson, we out.